What's going on everybody? It is Greg. We are back. We're not in the garage actually. We're leaving the garage. Today is something a little bit different. We are heading to Davenport. Now, uh, I normally wouldn't, um, don't do this. Well, sometimes, but not normally. Um, do this, go to somebody's house and work on their car. But this guy reached out to me on Facebook. And from what I understand, he's leaving. He's going to be moving to Puerto Rico and he's having some issues with his car. And he wants to get them um, sorted out before he leaves. He wants to swap in a Mark II rear beam. Um, and he's having issues with his front wheels fitting, um, getting past his brakes and stuff like that. So we're going to go, we're going to swap the rear beam. Um, figure out what we can do about his uh, wheel situation up front, whether he needs spacers, which is most likely, and then possibly do a partial air ride install, probably just like the struts, um, the, the bags, and the airline, stuff like that. So we'll see what hap exactly what we have to do when we get there, but from what I know for sure, for sure, 100%, we're doing... Uh, Mark II rear beam in his Mark III. So I'll see you guys uh, when we get there. Time to get something to eat. I'm starving. All right, so made it out here. Hang CD. We're getting the car jacked up. We're already, we're already moving and starting. This shouldn't take that long. Hopefully we don't have any issues. You have to be careful with the rockers. Car was recently painted rockers replaced everything looks good the issue with the wheels that we that i see just by looking somebody did some machining work now this being machined off is what's causing the issue because now the pad has pretty much been shaved off rafa probably did this to make them fit his van again i'm not 100 percent sure but that's what's causing the issue so i brought some spacers and we're gonna try those and see how that works out. Pretty sure it's gonna work, pretty sure. But now we're gonna get everything off, get the wheels off, get the brakes off, the lines off, axles off, brakes, all that stuff. Swap them onto the Mark II beam and then slap it in the car and we'll be good to go. So, and that's Jose. All right, got the caliper off, which is just two, what is these, seven, eight, eight meter head hex bolts take the bracket off you take your e-brake off disconnect everything from over here you're not gonna have to do anything with your brake lines just disconnect everything because it's gonna stay on the car all these clips you see right here you're gonna make sure your hard lines are off of that that way when you drop down the beam you won't have anything in the way now this is a VR6 car. My car was a VR6 car. If you have a two liter that you swapped over or if it's a two, anything like that, you're gonna have to deal with the prop valve being back here. Then you're gonna have to bypass that or you're gonna have to figure that out. This is not the case. So I'm not even gonna go into that because we're smart. We own VR6s, just saying. You'll get to this point. You just use a flat screwdriver, take off the axle cover. Where did I put it? here take out the cotter pin to put back in the axle cover there and castle nut it's not much to these and then you have your the pin that holds on the nut that holds on obviously well we'll get into this when we put it back on it just needs to be pretty much hand tight enough to let the axle the rotor and everything rotate get your washer Come out of there, buddy. then you'll have your inner and outer bearing and right now we should be able to just pull off the whole assembly you got your inner bear outer bearing there the inner bearing is in the inside in there and then Oh, see? Somebody did have a seal. That's good. All right. Take all this off. 
Again, go to the other side, do the exact same thing. Take off your axle stubs and then put everything on the Mark II beam and then back together. Okay, once you take out the four bolts, two are 15s, two are, the two on the bottom are 16 millimeter heads. Once you take everything off, you'll see everything's just hanging. So you don't really have to do much else to this side. Disconnect the strut. Then we'll go on our disconnect or loosen up the four bolts that hold the beam to the car. And then we are good to go on this side. Okay, so got most of the brake lines and stuff off of the beam. I'm gonna go underneath the car and double check. See if anything else is hanging up. Took the rear struts out. Now, obviously, pro tip, take the top of the strut off first on both sides so your rear beam can go down. If you have a muffler, that's the only way you're going to get that bolt out. If you have a Mark III and you don't know that yet, there you go. So, we're good on both sides right now. He went to go get the beam. Everything is pretty much disconnected. What I'll do is pull this down, take off any more bracketry or whatever on the beam, and then... He doesn't have the Mark II brackets, so we're going to take off the through bolt there, pull everything out, and then put the other beam in its place, not having to deal with the four bolts, which could be easier, should be easier, I don't know. Haven't done it that way yet, but we're moving. It's not terribly hot. There's overcast. The weather's pretty nice. I mean, I'm sweating, but I'm not dying. Um, he, he's not going to do the air right today, which will save us time. And then after we get the rear beam in and everything back up, we'll get to the front. I'm pretty sure he's just going to need a 10 mil spacer. We'll chest the fit and then we'll be good to go. Momo wheels are sick and we got little pupper dogs. Okay. Got the brake lines and the brackets and everything off. Now... Use the jack to hold up one side while well, I just take this the bolt the through bolt through and then we have the new or new to us mark II rear beam with poly bushes poly bushings installed hopefully this goes in that bracket easy otherwise man oh man we'll see You can see the difference. Now we're on both sides. I mean, if you even it out, looks like that. So you'll gain some millimeters for sure. Oh, yeah. It fought me, but we got it out. All right, so I got the rear beam back in. See, he's got the purple bushings in there. Um, there was a little issue with it being a little short on this side for some reason. Um, probably due to the new bushings being a little bit bigger. All I did was the three bolts that hold the bracket to the body. Loosen those and fit it onto, just loosen them. I didn't take it all the way out. Fit it on, fit the beam in there with a little bit of wiggle room and then force its way back over and then tightened everything. 
So we're good on that end. We're looking for washers right now to add a little bit, just a little bit of ca uh, camber. And then once we have those, we can start rebuilding um, all the suspension parts like the brakes and stuff and put everything back together. And then we'll be done. This is gonna go pretty quick. We have to make a run to the hardware store to pick up the washers that we need to add a little bit of camber. We figured let's just add the camber now um, the exact same way that Rafa had his. That way we don't have any issues down the road and it should fit perfectly the same the way Rafa's is because he likes the way that sits. His car sat, rather. So we're going to run to Ace, grab the washers now. Beam is in. Once we get the washers in, this is not going to take long at all. Um, Yeah, just pretty much put everything back together. Like I said before, we're not going to do the air right now because he's going to have his brother-in-law help him. And he doesn't want the car to be stuck without any being flat on the ground. So we put the struts in, all that good stuff. And then all the axles and everything, put the bearings in. And then we'll be good to go. And then we should be out of here. I don't know what time it is, but we'll be out of here. Probably take another... Let's go slow. We'll, we'll say another two hours and then we'll be done. Then this car will be back to normal. We'll test fit the front wheels with my 12 mil spacers. I don't have 10s. I have 12 here which should do the job perfectly fine if that works for him then he just needs to order like i'm pretty sure two tens will do the job hopefully it doesn't poke too much two tens then he can add camber later on down the road and then he'll be set and i'll be on my way so just waiting for him to come outside and we can go good progress rear beams in after my mistake, I put it in upside down. <laughs> so, we're back in, everything's tight. We're going, we got the, uh, we put two washers on the front, front lower bolt for camber, one on the top front for tow. And right now what I'm gonna do is clean off the axle, re-grease it, and then put on the disc, put everything back on, bolt everything back up on this side, jump to the other side, and we'll be done pretty quickly this is it's not the hardest job it's also not the easiest uh, it goes better with two people you can do it by yourself I did mine by myself years ago but I would have rather have another set of hands it goes way easier two jacks jack stands and you're pretty much good to go so if you really if you come across a mark II beam and you want to put it even if you don't need it take it save it whatever because eventually you're gonna need it you will need it and it comes in handy so there's that one thing you are gonna have to worry about that I think I did it on my car too now that I think about it the rear ABS sensor there the factory or the mark 3 beam has the groove right there on top for it the mark 2 beam does not because obviously mark 2s don't have ABS so you could see where it would hit right there so instead of sitting there trying to grind and cut that out just take it out because you're not really gonna need it so what I'll do is I'll just zip tie this up underneath the car and um, go that route so we should be alright and we should be good oh getting too old for this so I'm gonna clean this off regrease it and then continue on I can I can see the finish line I can see it just like in true Florida fashion, it is getting ready to rain. We have, I didn't put, take a picture before or film it before, but these wheels were sticking out a hell of a lot more, actually six more millimeter. So with this, once you get it on the ground and it has air ride, that's gonna sit perfect, perfect. We're getting ready to do the driver's side now and then we'll be done. But we have to locate a missing bolt because you're working on a Volkswagen, a bolt wants to go missing. How the battery in that GoPro? You last? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so hopefully it doesn't seize up on me again. Got both sides done, putting the wheels back on, gonna be able to drop it down. Uh, see how they fit, even though uh, that's gonna be warming. And then we'll just fit the front with a 12 mil spacer that I bought. And then once it clears, which I'm sure it will, We'll measure to see how many, how thick his adapt, his spacers 
need to be. We're pretty sure like anywhere from like eight to 10 mil is gonna be what he needs. But we got the job done. Took longer than expected. Had to make two trips to hardware store, but mistakes and you know, things happen when you're working on cars. So, but we still got the job done. It's gonna look sick. Drop it down, look, look at that. Look at that. I mean, I mean, oh, that's money. I got some space. So we put 12 mil spacers and the poke is ridiculous there's no camber dialed in now we can add camber with the strut and then he has camber top plates when he puts his air ride that might fix the, fix the situation but he's still gonna be the bottom of the wheel is gonna be poking like crazy and we i don't think he's a fan of that so 12 mil and we're right we're right there i think 10 is gonna be pushing it but, I don't know. <laughs> but now I know yeah. what I need. So, we ran a 12 mil spacer, which worked great. And then, he had zero camber on the car. So, I loosened the bolts and pushed the, uh, added as much camber as the factory bolts would uh, allow. That's it would allow and it fits perfect. I mean it's money with the air ride it's gonna go down exactly where he's gonna want it to sit the only thing is when he does the air ride he has he ordered the um, adjustable camber uh, caps up top the camber plates and he'll be able to fine-tune it where he wants it so he knows now he needs to order 12 mil spacers for the rear for the front the rear it's pretty much as good where it's gonna be and now the car looks it looks great it's not even lower on the coilovers but when he does the air ride tomorrow i think if he's gonna do it it's gonna look it's gonna look amazing it looks really, really good and he was stressing he was really really stressing but we got it figured out everything's good so he orders his spacers puts them on leaves the camber adds camber to the passenger side and in a day or two his car will be ready to go What's up? So I left uh, Jose's house. Uh, real, real cool dude. Um, <laughs> we talked about not that we had a little issue on Facebook, but kind of did. But not a not not nothing super serious. But anyways, he got through that, and I helped him out with his car. We got the rear camber in, the rear camber dialed in, the uh, Mark II rear beam installed properly. Finally. Um, he's set on that front the front wheels he's been asking for I think like two weeks now how he's gonna make these wheels fit with no real answer except everybody's just running all sell the wheels sell the wheels bigger space whatever 12 mil spacers fit and they poked like they poked ridiculous but he had zero camber so we did that. I added camber factory with the factory bolts. If he needs more, he's gonna get with his air ride kit um, camber plates. So he's be, he'll be able to dial in the fitment perfect, I believe. And he's super happy now. He doesn't have to sell the wheels. He doesn't really have to worry about it. He has another issue with the turn signals, but that's before taking everything apart and then you know checking the wiring. That's what he's gotta do. But shout out to him. He got his car working. It's a real nice Jazz Blue GTI. Um, it's a uh, awesome. It's gonna be an awesome build, I think, when he's done with it. He's he's on the right path, and he's a cool dude. Um. So yeah, that's it. I'm heading home now. I'm exhausted. This took longer than I ever wanted it to, but sometimes it happens. Not working working on cars sometimes isn't just cut and dry, or everything works exactly how you want it to. Sometimes a three hour job turns into all day so you know bolts missing or breaking or this and that so it is what it is so 
with that being said, if you haven't and you want to, you know, hit the subscribe button, like it, share, blah, blah, blah. If you don't, then you don't. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm just making videos for whatever reason. I will see you guys next time in either my garage or apparently now whoever else is that wants to uh, get some work done on their car because it seems like I'm doing that now. So, peace.